We all want a little bit more out of our e-mountain bikes, right? The ability to go that extra mile. And one of the simplest ways of doing this is actually by your choice of tyre. In this video, we're going to be looking at the differences and the detail in the range between different tread patterns and compounds. Now, tyre choice affects other things as well as battery range, such things as your speed, your control on the trail, and of course, your heart rate. And these are gonna be some of the things we'll be picking up on in this video. We're gonna be riding a range of trail and surface today from tarmac to fire road, technical single track, and of course, some uphill trails. We're also going to be using two different types of tyre, a technical downhill tyre and a more low profile trail tyre. Now seeing as Maxis are a partner, we'll be using their tyres in this video. However, the results will give an insight into any tyre brand. Let's start off then with a softer and more aggressive pairing for today. Uh, on the bike here at the minute, I have the Maxis Asagai. Now this is a full on World Cup downhill condition tyre, but it's also really good for e-bike use as well because it's so aggressive. Uh, weighs in at 2.94 pounds, it's 2.5 wide, really aggressive tread pattern as I mentioned, plus it's really soft compound. Up the front we've got a Minion DHF, that's also soft compound and also 2.5. Okay, we're about ready to roll. There's a big hill ahead of us. It's broken down into three distinct sections, tarmac, fire road, and technical. So we're gonna be looking at the data of each of those sections. So to be able to measure our data today, we're using the specialized mission control app uh, on my phone. I'm gonna be riding in turbo mode on the e-bike. And in terms of my heart rate, uh, I'm gonna be using my Garmin on my wrist here. See you in a minute. Heart rate was certainly pretty high with these super soft compound tires. Average heart rate 118 beats per minute and maximum heart rate 142 beats per minute. So average speed 14.4 mile per hour, maximum speed 21.9 mile an hour and the total time 3 minutes 27. What's quite interesting is when you're on a tarmac road, it's very easy to get above the 25 kilometer an hour restriction. So a lot of that tarmac road, I would imagine, is gonna be above that. So, but not actually be using that much battery. So it'll be interesting to compare with the uh, low profile tires later on. Obviously the critical one on this challenge is I actually used 2% battery on the tarmac stage. Like I said, because uh, you're riding above that uh, 25 kilometer an hour, the 15 mile an hour uh, restriction, then obviously it's gonna use far less battery. We then went through a short transition and moved swiftly on to the fire road sector of the climb. And it was here that we expected the speed to be slower and be taking more drain on the battery. So the all important fire road section. Now this is the type of riding I'm sure most of us do. It's been wet here in the UK for quite a few months so the going is quite heavy. So that's gonna take a lot more drag out of the bike, a lot more, a lot more energy out of that battery. So the time on the stage was seven minutes. Um, the average speed was 13.8 miles an hour, so under the 15 mile an hour, which means the battery in the motor is actually working uh, compared to the road where we were above that zone. Uh, my heart rate, 126 beats per minute average and 138 uh, tops, which means it was more of a consistent ride than that on the tarmac road. But the all important battery consumption, well, uh, it looks like I used 9% of the battery on that seven minute stage alone.
And so then to the last sector of this mixed climb and definitely the toughest, roots, ruts and soft mud. Surely at the end of the day, this is where the soft tyre will score the highest and where the low profile dry tyre will slip up, well, so to speak. There you go. Six minutes, 19 seconds, average speed, 7.7 .7 mile an hour, maximum speed, 17.4 mile an hour, 124 beats per minute average on my heart rate and 142 beats per minute maximum. What about the battery consumption on the Asagai Minion DHF combination? Ooh, 9% for that last technical section. The combined times are in then for the soft tyre attempt as I quickly swapped over to the dry style summer tyres. Now as you can see we're fitting something altogether different from the first run. This is much more of a, a dry weather tyre. It's the Maxxis Cross Mark 2.25. It's much lower profile. It's a harder compound than the Asagai tyre. And up front I've actually got a Minion SS. Now, this is slightly bigger. This is 2.3. But again you can see that low profile there which hopefully will mean more range from the battery. So here we are then, back at the start of the hill. Now it's going to be really interesting to see the effect that these harder compound, lower profile tyres have not just on the battery range of the bike, but also on such things as my heart rate and also the speed across the ground, no more so than on this first tarmac section. Now, I've only just got down here and already I can feel that the rolling resistance is far less on these tyres than on those super sticky Asagais. Get him away. <sighs> oh. oh boy. Ah, crikey. Sort of the noises. First things first. Battery. Wow. So. That actually only used 1% of the battery. Wow, so that's the battery, almost half the power used compared to the first run on the soft compound tires. But what about my stats on that time stage on tarmac? Well, look at the time, three minutes 12. So that's considerably faster than on the super uh, soft tires. Uh, average speed 17.1 mile an hour and a maximum speed of 22.6 miles an hour. So that proves that actually on average, I wasn't using any motor or any battery on that time stage on the tarmac. So obviously, uh, that proves in the stats there. Now, average heart rate, 130 beats per minute, which proves again that I'm above the threshold limit and all that effort is my own. Uh, maximum heart rate, 146. And so then to the fire road, a place where surely the lower profile tires would simply make even more massive inroads into the soft tires. Okay, okay, so first of all, the critical number, the battery consumption. Okay, I think the first, first climb up there, it was 9% uh, battery consumption. This time, 6%. Now that's just on a, on a short uh, six minute uphill section. So you can imagine that multiplying that throughout a day, that's gonna be a considerable saving. Right, time for my own stats on the fire road climb section. And at this time it was six minutes, 12 seconds. I seem to recall last time it was closer to seven minutes. Uh, average speed, 14.6 miles an hour and a max speed of 26 miles an hour. So again, that shows that on average we are underneath the threshold limit of the motor. Uh, average heart rate, 130 beats per minute and maximum heart rate, 145. So quite similar to last time. But the big news from this section, once you move from time 
tarmac to off-road and you're underneath that threshold, that 25 kilometer an hour, 15 mile an hour threshold, it shows that, you know, there really is some difference uh, between uh, low profile, dry weather tires and sticky tires. But one more stage to go. And remember, we still need to get up to the top of the hill. So can these low profile dry weather tires get through that mud? Let's go and find out. And so to the final technical stage of the climb. Well, it appears that we are saving battery power on the low profile tires. It seems like they're quick, that we're quicker on time to this point, but we've got this super slippery technical section ahead of us. What I'm thinking is, can we actually get up through there because of the uh, dry weather nature of the tyres? And will we be losing time because, uh, you know, we're going to grip on the back tyre? Plus, if that back tyre is spinning, is that going to be actually using more battery than the sticky tyres? Three. Now going into the last stage, the low profile tyres, we're already over a minute up on time over the softer, more aggressive tyres. Surely there was no way a soft, wet, rooty tech climb would make that much difference. Or would it? Final climb of the final run then, and it seems again that those low profile summer tyres have the edge over the sticky tyres. This time 7% battery consumption compared to the 9% on the uh, Asagai tyres. What about my own numbers then? Well, it looks like it took me 5 minutes 50 to do the climb. Uh, average speed of 9 mile an hour. My average heart rate was 135 beats per minute. So again, still quite a workout even with the uh, low profile harder compound tyres. I really didn't think I was going to get through the sticky, boggy section. And I'm sure that there was some actually added battery consumption through there because the tyres were spinning. But overall, in this video, I think you know we've set out to find. To, we've actually found out what we set out to achieve, which is that uh, the low-profile, narrower, harder compound tyres are better on battery consumption than the sticky tyres. I think this is really important for guys who are going for big days out on smoother single tracks and fire roads and maybe grass conditions such as this here. Also has an effect for people doing enduro racing, not only in their in their range that they can accomplish, but also in the times on the on the on the uh, liaison stages. Um, if you want to see more about tyres, I've gone absolutely bonkers on tyres in a video which I've left just down there below. Uh, let us know your thoughts on tyres. What tyres are you guys using? Uh, what tyre pressures, what compounds, what tread patterns has a huge, huge effect on tyre range. And I think we only just dipped into this subject. Thumbs up if you like the video and hit on the globe to subscribe to EMBN.